Hi everyone, hope you have all been finding a little use of my previous Wepler videos. Since I created those, there have been two new beta versions of Wepler released, which unfortunately I have not really had much time to test out thoroughly. Luckily with the Wepler team going to Dubai for the week, it gave me a little more time for testing Wepler Beta 27. With these tutorials, I'm going to be trying to split them up into slightly smaller parts, so you can rather watch whatever you are most interested in. However, still have the option of watching all the parts, so you can see exactly what I did to get to, to a particular sort of project completion. Well, let's get started at the projects panel for Wepler. Before I create a new project, I'd like to quickly show you my file structure where I've created a, a simple images folder within my main project folder called Wepler Water Company. I've just placed this into my documents folder inside my main hard drive. All the images have been cropped and resized to what I would like them to eventually display as. In my browser, I have the website loaded up where it is only showing the directory structure. If this were a real website, I would have my .htaccess file on my Linux and Apache web server set, so it would never really display directory trees, but rather a restricted or 404 error page for obvious security reasons. Upon refresh, you'll see that all I have in this directory is a link to the parent directory, so basically I'm starting with a totally clean slate. In the next tab, I have my file manager open from my cPanel account, where I have created a directory beta 27 in the standard Linux public underscore HTML folder. All this lives in the fake hosting account of Learning Wepler. Back at the Wepler project pane, I have the option of opening an existing project or to create a new project, which is what we are going to concentrate on. This then takes us to, the, to a screen of starter projects or templates. The templates are basically the same as the starter projects, other than the fact that the starter projects are just full of base components with no real content in them. For my project, I'm going to begin with a blank project. Here we set up the options for our new blank project, starting with the project name, which I tend to avoid using spaces, replacing them with underscores, which really might just be total overkill, but possibly just a habit I picked up over the years. Next, we need to choose where our project files reside. As I showed you earlier, I have them just inside my documents folder in my home, my user's home directory. We're going to create a website rather than a mobile app, and the website will be hosted on the fake domain of learning wepler.com in the directory of beta 27. So the URL will be as follows. Lastly, the server model for my purposes will be PHP, most likely because I honestly have never really used ASP.NET or classic ASP. Once all set, let's hit the create button so we can get started. I like to check that I have chosen the correct directory, so I need to look at the file manager within the interface. All seems correct, with only an images folder in my base directory tree. Next I check the target, which always starts off as local until we set up the server. Let's click the gear icon to set up our new server details. Before we begin, for those that did not watch my first videos, I need you to know that these are fake servers on fake domains that I am able to create through a dedicated server I run at my service provider. Please don't bother seeing if you can see these sites as they are not real. I have to place a directive in my local hosts file on my Mac in order for it to even think that these are real for the purposes of these tests. If you want to see how that is done on a Mac, you would need to look at my other video titled 02 Wepler FTP Connection, where I show this in detail. Click on the plus symbol and start entering your details, similar to how I have done. You might want to pause here and make sure you have this correct for your own needs. Just a note that the remote directory can now have the trailing forward slash and it works as expected. Thanks George, appreciate it. Let's hit the handy test connection button which reports a successful response, which you can double check through the built-in console below. Hit save to close that up. 
I'm going to set up a few base things as I like them set, starting off with turning on the debug commands option, which is really handy when things go wrong and you have no clue why. Next I'll do a system check to ensure my installation has all the required components and supporting libraries. If yours is not right, you might want to check out my first video titled 01 Wapler Complete Installation. Mine shows Node.js is correct, Git is correct, and lastly LFTP is correctly installed. So that's all great news. I'm going to change my target to the newly set up server account and hit the check button to make sure all is well with my project. Click OK to the success dialog and I will go back to the file panel to see what is on my server. Expand this panel to show the local and remote files side by side. As we already knew, the remote is entirely empty aside from a DS store file which as far as I know can be removed as I think it is really just a hidden file created by the Apple operating system although I'm not certain so I will just ignore that rather before I do anything I'm going to upload the local images folder to my hosting account now this is not something I would ever normally do as generally before I begin a project I honestly have no idea what images I'll be needing in fact, I'm typically a fly-by-the-seat-of-my-pants development mentality type person. However, in Wepler, if you don't, the experience is not really desirable. Let me explain. Normally, I would create a local project with no server and nothing placed in the server. Once I have a few things on my page, I'd worry about getting everything uploaded for testing purposes. However, if I did that in Wepler, I would not even be able to see an image in design view. It would just show a broken image icon and the image source would be set to a local path. Not only a local path, but a, a local relative path. Meaning that the design view has no real way of finding the actual preview of my image without at least an absolute path. I hope that sort of makes sense. This is why we first set up the FTP server after creating our project. And why I set the target to the remote server to ensure that the source paths were set to a relative path of my remote server and why I am uploading the images to the remote server before even starting a page on my site. Okay, now that's done. I will create my first blank page, ensuring it is placed in my root directory, not the images directory, and rename it index.php. The reason for the odd name is that most Linux web servers are set to first look for files named index.html or index.php when entering a directory. If it finds a file with one of those names, it'll automatically render the contents of that file without having to manually specify the file name. If this were not the case, then browsing to let's say www.apple.com would have to be rather www.apple.com forward slash index.php, which needless to say is fairly horrible. Lastly, let's open our file and hide the remote files panel to give us some space to begin our first home page design. I'll end up, I'll end this tutorial here. And if you're interested, you can check out the follow up video titled O2 starting my first simple Wepler website page. If you are enjoying these videos and you want me to continue with more, please like and subscribe because this is not my job and I have no schedule of when more videos will be created so you might want to turn on notifications as well. See you in the next video.